That take charge of the area to perpetuate their agenda. But I'm happy to announce to you the one in charge of the Sakumono area is submitted fully to us. Amen. Amen. The powers there be are submitted what? Fully to us. Amen. Amen. And you will see the effect. Because it means that in this land, in the land of Tema, God he will prosper his work. Amen. Amen. God he will prosper his work in GTC. Amen. Amen. And you see, sometimes we lose sight of the fact that it takes individuals to make a movement. Amen. Amen. If God is prospering GTC, it's because your life will be prospering. Amen. Amen. Who, who, who is GTC? It's a collection of the people. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, if God is making room for GTC, as long as you are under the umbrella of GTC, things will make room for you. Amen. Amen. Because the authority over your life has paved the way. For things to happen. Amen. Amen. I remember after we had dealt with the powers of Tema, one night the Lord led me to pray on the streets around Committee 20 where we were fellowshipping. That night, it was a Saturday night into a Sunday. And I prayed around Comte 20, walking in the middle of the street. Dealt with the road from motorway into 20. Walked on that road in the night, praying. There were cars coming. They had to pave way for me in the middle. The two that attempted to come on me were displaced by the force of God with me. And right after that, I knew that the territorial power over Committee 20 was dealt with. It was that night that God pointed this place. Right after that, he pointed this place. And tonight... I told you some time ago, I was in the office praying. No, I think I was just lying down. And then I saw three witches in charge of this area. And tonight, whilst I was praying, I dealt with them. And they ran away like that. Amen. And I knew that we are done. Amen. Amen. <laughs> ah, we thank God for victory. Amen. We thank God for victory. So he's made room for us and we'll prosper. Amen. Amen. I see your prosperity breaking forth. Amen. Amen. And uh, this morning I was remembered of, a, of the first scripture God spoke to me. Isaiah 45 verse 3. In fact, when I learned to hear God I was in Unity Hall Chapel praying and I, 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 I was told that after you pray you wait for a while to hear what God will say to you so I finished praying and I was on the bench that, that day Lord what are you saying and whilst there I heard Isaiah 45 verse 3 and I went to the scripture. It's been with me forever. This morning I, I, I was remembered of it. He says, I will give you the hidden treasures. Riches stashed away in secret places. 
so you may recognize that I am the Lord, the one who calls you by name, the God of Israel. Amen. Amen. The riches of the kingdom will be so vivid in our midst. Amen. Amen. Are, you, are you following me? The riches of the kingdom will be so vivid in our midst, will be so magnificent. That's why we we'll build skyscrapers like what? Papa, tell me, like what? Pia, buying pure water. We we'll build skyscrapers like what? Buying pure water. Because the riches of God will be so magnificent, so it, 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 it will be so abundant. I will give you. He said, I will do what? Give you. Give you. <laughs> I will give you hidden treasures. Riches stashed away in secret places. There are riches stashed away in secret places. And he will give it to us. And we will display our dominion and riches by that. Amen. I see your portion coming to you in the name of Jesus. Your portion will not be denied you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, please follow me this morning. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. He says, God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So in Genesis chapter 1 verse 7, there was something that scripture tells us here that was settled. And what was settled is that God created humankind in his own image. The image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Or you can say God created Adam in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Let me just switch to the um, New King James. He said, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created what? them. God said in the previous verse that let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So in verse 26, God made his intention clear. He said, let us make man in our image. Why should man be in our image? So they will have dominion. So it takes man in the image of God to exercise dominion. Note that. If you are taking notes, it's a good place to note. It takes only man in the image of God to have dominion the way God wants it. God created man in his image. And he went ahead and said, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Yet, when we move to chapter 2, verse 7, we see here, he says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground 
and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And man became a living being. So what's the disconnect here? In Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, it says God created man. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, we are seeing God forming man. What's the disconnect? Genesis 1 27 says he created man in his own image. And went ahead and created male and female. But we see here in Genesis chapter 2 that God now comes and formed man out of the dust of the earth. So he took the dust of the earth and then he formed man. He took the dust of the earth and formed man. And breathed into man the breath of life. And man became a living being. So man became an active being on earth. So what was the first man then? Let me just move forward. Ah, okay. It says, forever, O Lord, thy word is what? It's what? Settled where? God's word is settled. When God speaks, that word is a settled word. When he said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness, that word he produced, he had made man. That was why verse 27 went ahead to say that God made man in his image. Because by the word that he spoke, he had made man. Amen. 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 Are you following me? Are you following me? By the word he spoke. Mind you, if you go to Genesis 1, you see that God came on the scene to speak words to make things. So the order of Genesis 1 was an order of word producing things. Are, are you following me? Are you following me? Let, let's go back and then. Oh, Jesus, sweet Jesus, thank you for truth. So Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. And void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. What did God say? He spoke the word, Let there be light. And what happened? And there was light. So by the word He released, there was a manifestation. The same thing. Verse 3. Sorry, verse 4. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from, from the darkness. God called the light day and called the darkness, he called night. So evening and morning were the first day. Verse 6. Then God said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament. So what God said, God saw. Amen. So when you use the same principle and go to 26 and 27, when God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, 27 comes to say, so God created. A amen. amen. As he spoke the word, the word manifested. If you care to know, that is why John chapter 1 says that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word has the image of God. And the word became flesh. Don't worry. The message will be there, recorded. You can visit it. But as we progress, you will understand more. So, God, by his word, had created man in his image and in his likeness. God has a particular nature. And he has created man after that nature. But here we see man formed. Man formed and given a living being status on earth. Let's go to Genesis 3. You will then understand why the work of Jesus by the blood is so critical. Because he needed to restore us to that order. My father, thank you. 
So Genesis chapter 3. Okay, let me start from let me start from down and then we'll come up. Okay. Verse 22, Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. Are you following me please? Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. It says, "And the Lord God said, now the man has become like one of us. The man God formed. The man God formed. He's saying that now the man I formed has become like one of us. So it means that the man he formed wasn't like him. Amen. But he's saying that now the man has become like one of us. But he went forward to specify what he meant by one of us. Because, you know, God is a spirit. Is that not it? God is a what? John chapter 4 verse 24. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. So if he's making somebody in his image, that person will be in his spirit. Amen. Because you can't be a spirit and make your image something else. If I want the image of Mafia, eh, can I take, what's your name, my, 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 my friend? Titi. Can I take the Titi as the image of Mafia? Is it possible? So, Titi, sit down. Mafia, sit down. Thank you. So, if God says, I'm making man in my image, then he has to be his image. If God is a spirit, then man must be spirit. Amen. So here, he's saying that now man is become like one of us. So it means that he was now speaking to spirit nature. Man is become like one of us. And he went ahead to specify the kind of spirit nature he's talking about. And he said, man is become like one of us, knowing what? Good and what? Evil. Because, you see, when God formed man, he put two trees in the garden. I'm sure those of you, if you go to Bible uh, Sunday school, they teach that. God put two trees in the garden. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, and then the tree of life. They were available. And he told man specifically, do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But he didn't stop man from eating from life. He gave man a strict instruction. Don't eat of knowledge of good and evil. But man went ahead to eat knowledge of good and evil. And we see that when man did that, he started gaining knowledge of good and evil. That spirit force in him started giving him the ability to see things differently. So it was then that God came and said that man is become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And please, let's go ahead. you get something beautiful here. He must not be allowed to stretch out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the tree of life was available to man. But man went and took of knowledge of good and evil. So man was kept from life. But we will see something here and we will know, we will understand what then is the nature of God. Is the nature of God good and evil or life? Because the beauty of it is that when God spoke that let us make man in our image and after our likeness and 27 said man was made or was created. I'll come to this later. Let me not take the equation to quadratic level. Let me maintain it in algebraic equation. Then when we finish algebraic equation, we can come to quadratic equations. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so here we see that God said man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Let's keep him away from life. And I'm saying that, then what is the nature of God? Let's go to John chapter 5 verse John chapter 5 verse 26. John 5:26. Listen to this. Jesus was saying something here. John 5:26. Are you following me? Are you following me? John 5:26. He said, "For just as the Father has life in himself." What do the Father have? Life. Just as the Father has life in himself, Thus he has granted the son to have life in himself. So, 
if God has life, when he's making his image, his image is supposed to have what? Life. So, do you see that the image of God was available for the formed man? Because the tree of life was there. Now we can solve the algebraic equation. That was what I wanted to say earlier. But now you can solve it. You, 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 you see it? God was not partial. He put there life. And did not command man not to eat it. He commanded man that don't go the other way. Because there are two spirits. Spirit beings. Knowledge of good and evil and life. God's own is life. Satan's own is good and evil. Amen. Amen. So he commanded that man don't partake of good and evil. But my own is there for you. Freely. He said, for of every tree you can eat freely. But man chose good and evil. Is it clear now? So can you see that when he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, he actually made man in his image and in likeness. That mystery was locked up in the tree of life. That man in his image and likeness was there in the tree of life. Available for the form man to take and become like him in life. But he took knowledge of good and evil and became like God in good and evil. He inherited the spirit of good and evil. Is it clear? Yeah. So, the reason why God prevented in Genesis chapter 3, where we read, God prevented man from the tree of life was there was a need or at that time there arose a need for something to be done to deal with the knowledge of good and evil before man can take on life. So, he said, keep life away from man. And he protected life. And if you are here, you know that I always say that sin, what is sin? Sin is, when you boil down, is the knowledge of good and evil. That's sin. It was when man partook of the fruits of knowledge of good and evil that he said that man sinned. Is that not it? Oh? So whatever man got is that nature of sin. So Jesus Christ, as John put it in John chapter 1, came as the Lamb of God. He came as the Lamb of God. John chapter 1 verse 29. On the next day, John was, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the what? World. He said he takes away the sin of the world. And I, I continually say that when we talk about sins, we are not essentially talking about sin. We are talking about the fruit of sin. Amen. Amen. When you mention stealing, uh, adultery, fornication, or, or, they are fruits of sin. They are as a result of the nature of sin. Just like when we talk about the fruits of the spirit, meekness, gentleness, uh, 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 faithfulness, all that, they are as a result of the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit in you. So you have the fruits of the Spirit. So, when we talk about the fruits of sin, they are as a result of the nature of sin. So Jesus came so that by his blood, he can actually purchase us back from the path of sin. Deal with sin and make us available to be people of life. Amen. Amen. So if you were here yesterday, we saw in Acts chapter 11. We saw in Acts chapter 11 where the, the Jerusalem, when Peter went back to Jerusalem and he was being questioned for what he did in Colonial's house in Acts chapter 10. They admitted that, okay, now the repentance that leads to life is what God has given the Gentiles to. Amen. The repentance that leads to what? life. Jesus came that when we repent by his blood, he knocks off sin. And we are able to now take on life, which is God's nature. That is why he says that in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, if anyone be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. 
all things have passed away. He said they have passed away. Why are you still making it present? All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. The old thing that was controlling the formed man was the man of sin. The spirit of sin that was in him. But when you believe Jesus and receive the work he did by his blood, he deals with the old one. Takes away the sin of the earth. It is taken away from your life. And makes you available to now receive his nature, which is life. That's why the blood of Jesus and the work of the cross is very important. That's why I, I said yesterday, when you repent according to Jesus' order, you are saved. What are you saved from? You are saved from the man of sin, the nature of sin. You are no more a slave to the nature of sin. You are no more a slave to the nature of sin. You are saved from that nature. The spirit of sin that rules in your members is dealt with, is taken off, so that you can now inherit the spirit of life and live like God on earth. Amen. You no more become a mere human being. That's why he calls you a new creature. So like the first formed man took on sin and started a race. Jesus came to also start another race. That is why we are new creatures when we are in him. We are no more the old, we are new. So the blood of Jesus is the cost that the father paid to make sure that he can restore the sons or the children back to his order as he desired in the beginning. Can I say something here? So the moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, when you receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you are taken back. Redo, follow me, please. You are taken back from where Adam has plunged the world into or humankind into. You are taken back and restored to Eden. You now have a privilege to be in Eden back. Now, it's for you to decide whether you will take a decision and by the Spirit be a partaker of life or go back into good and evil. I hope that is not a level. Everyone that believes in Jesus is saved. That is why he says you are taken from the kingdom of darkness and you are translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Where life is available, will you be a partaker of life? Or you want to be in, in the old na nature. That is why the Holy Ghost is very important. In Ephesians 1, he teaches us that when we were purchased, we were sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. So that by the Holy Ghost, we can walk in our inheritance of life. And all that pertains to life. So, Peter put it, according to his divine power, he had given us all things that pertain unto what? Life and what? God did less. Second Peter 1 3. Who is the divine power? The Holy Ghost. That is why I kept saying throughout the week that you cannot be a Christian without the Holy Ghost. For you to be a Christian, you must of necessity have the Holy Ghost. And yesterday we saw it in Acts chapter 11. The first place they were called Christians was in Antioch. Why? Because Holy Ghost was in action. So you can't say you are a Christian. And say, oh, I'm a Christian, I mean, I don't like Holy Ghost. <laughs> then you are not a Christian. But the blood of Jesus makes it possible for you to be restored back to the dignity of the life of God. The intention God had from the beginning in Genesis 1, when he says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, 26, and man was made in his image and in likeness, 27. That man was made. But the man was made to be revealed in a body. Because that man was in the image of God. And it's a spirit. He was made to be revealed well, in a body. So God came to form the body. And gave sustenance to the body. And said, body, you are free to take the spirit. Choose which spirit you want. And the body chose another one. And he said, ah, this one will bring you trouble. Oh. Okay, you let me put you aside. 
keep the way of the one that I wanted you to actually. I gave you permission to. You didn't. But let me keep it to be revealed in a time to make way for you and I to be partakers of life. Are you following it? Are you following it? Are you following it? So the essence of Christianity is to make you partakers of life. The image of God. The life of God. That is why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but what? Have eternal life or everlasting life. That life there, the Greek word is zoe, is different from the other life words in Greek. Because that zoe means the very life of God, the kind of life that God has. Let's not reduce Christianity to shaping mere mortals. Christianity is a revelation of immortals. It's a revelation of people after the order of God. People in the image of God. And that's what Jesus came on this earth to do. That's why he went on the cross. That's why he died on the cross. Shed his blood. So that by his blood, you and I can have the lenses to be partakers of life. I see every hindrance to you exercising that life knocked off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, we're going to demonstrate the blood. Please don't miss tonight. You can't come in the morning and miss the night because in the night, that is where we'll demonstrate it. We'll release the blood. And like I said yesterday, every idolatrous altar, idolatrous blood that has been speaking contrary to the order of God for your life, tonight, is the Allah show. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know they say killer Bible Allah show, David. You know so. Eh, no matter how strong killer is, no matter how strong killer is, la show killer go go. Amen. Oh, na lie. Those of you that watch to it, na lie. No matter how strong killer is, when you are watching a movie, no matter how strong the uh, the killer is, you let the bro man be feeble. Killer beat. Blowman, first show. See, Blowman will be exercising. Killer, second, he beat Blowman and make him pass a no problem. You wait. If the film is one hour, wait. When it gets to the 50th minute and Blowman going to meet Killer, know that Killer is gone. Because no matter what, Killer for die last show. Amen. Tonight is the last show for every idolatrous ancestral hold on your life. Tonight is the last show for it. Amen. Amen. So don't miss tonight. And when we deal with it, we we'll trust our Lord Jesus to release the Holy Spirit upon us. Amen. Amen. To baptize us afresh with the Holy Spirit so that we can be quickened and be incapacitated to be able to go into a place of working in life. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is just the beginning. Because it's the Holy Spirit that has been given what it takes to make life in you. You get back to Eden when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Are you with me? So don't miss tonight. I said don't do what? Don't miss tonight. It's going to be beautiful tonight. And God will be here to discharge His will concerning us. Amen. Amen. Good. No, we can't be stopped. This is a move of God. So burn like a fire. Bring your revival through us. Okay. We'll catch the wind that's already blowing. Swept up.
Crushing the powers of darkness Till the earth looks like heaven And only his kingdom remains We are here We are here and we're just getting started We're crushing 